Hello, we're back here at Peter's. We're here one year on from doing the renovation. This day last year was beautiful. This year, not so much, but we're gonna crack on anyway. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing the front and the back. It's a game of two halves really because the front gets a lot of sun and as you can see behind me, it's looking great. And the back is looking okay for what it's had this year in terms of weather and shade, but it's obviously not looking as good as this. So I'll show you that later. But for now, let's crack on with the front. All right, so just have a quick walk over the front. A few areas at the edges where it's not doing so well as the rest, but to be expected because we've got the shade within the wall, so it's always going to be uh, in the in the edges a bit worse, especially here where we have the shade of the uh, azalea. Um, so I've just been trying some out there. I'll show you more about that later. But for first, we're going to scalp it with the alert, just like we did last August, and then we're going to scarify it, overseed and top dress with the field compost number four and then that'll be it for the front so i'll go and get set up and then we'll get it we'll get started okay so the idea behind removing as much of the grass as we can is so that we get rid of all that old growth so our new growth can just grow from ground level like i've said in previous videos if we just feed on top of what we've already got that's when you end up with your spongy lawn so i've just set it up just done a bit of a test pass got it short as i want to be so I'm ready to crack on with some new blades as well. I'm going to take advantage of those. I've just uh, gone with the screwdriver and just adjusted them a little bit so they're cutting nice. So let's get this done. I know it look a mess, but it's for Peter's own good. So let's get started. And Kev did a great job of fixing this. So have a quick look up close you see now we're quite close you're never going to get it that close all over just because it's hand leveled so there are undulations which the mower can't read um so i'm happy with that and time now to get with the scarifier okay now time to get on with the scarifier i'm just going to do one pass and i'm literally just going to go up and i'm going to pull back and just do it that way just to avoid turning at that far end where it's a bit bald don't want to do any damage it's a little bit just a little bit damp as well so we just want to avoid as much damage as we can so just going to push and pull like i say so time to crack on So you can see now we've got some nice grooves for our seed to rest in. Not been able to get all the way to the edge because the wheel rides along the edge and then the scarifier doesn't start until that point. So I'm gonna do this bit by hand, but for that I've got my handheld scarifier just there. So I'll just do that, rake this off and then we're not closing up those gaps and I'll rake back on myself. So we leave these grooves open and then we're ready to seed. So this front lawn is gonna be done in no time. Okay, so we're just ready to go on with our seed. Now, originally this lawn was done with the Limigrain MM50, which is what they use at Wimbledon, but we've run out of that now. And what we have got left is getting on for two years old, so it won't be as efficient 
as new stuff would be because if seed loses, once you've opened the bag, around 20% efficacy a year. So we're going to start incorporating now the Baron Brug Extreme and they'll be absolutely fine. They're very similar. You wouldn't, if I didn't tell you, you would never know, but I just wanted to be honest and tell you what we're doing because it's not worth spending £150 on one bag to do this long when the same thing would happen. It would just be a waste of money. So we're going to start incorporating this. So I just want to overseed 50 grams a square metre, I think, just to be on the safe side just while we're doing it and just to because we've got quite a bit of ball patches around the edges so i think that would be a good idea so i've got 750 grams in my hopper here we're going on with the drop one just because it's a little bit windy and because the lawn's square it's easier to do it with this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go on a really low setting and i'm going to do multiple passes so it makes it a bit more accurate so if you're not sure low setting multiple patterns and if you find it's not dropping out just keep tweaking that dial at the top until you're happy with it but i'm just gonna i know where i am i'm gonna it's not changed from when i was at howard's last year so we'll go on with that and then we'll see how we get on so wish me luck okay so we're just about to go on with our top dressing the seed went on got that done even though it's windy still got it on because we use that drop spreader if we use the rotary spreader because it's already airborne when you're flinging it out, the wind picks it up and just blows it everywhere. And Peter would have a nice lawn in the borders and not so much in the middle. So on with the field compost number four. Remember, 10% discount code DHLE10. I'll put that on screen now. Sieve down to four mils, so it's really fine. Organic, it's from Green Waste and it's really good. Lawns love it. So what I'm gonna do is, last time in my last video, we put it on. I did it with the rake. Today I'm just going to try a few different things out to see which way is actually best way of spreading it. So I'm going to use a brush today on the front and we'll see how we get on with that. Um, and I'll try and find a straight edge as well and we'll maybe do that in the back and use uh, either a spirit level or just a little bit of wood just to pull it along. Anything that you've got in your shed because remember that's my ethos is we only try and use what people have in the shed in the main. I know I use scarifies and that but that's just because i have to but hand tools i like to use whatever you've got in the shed so time to get on with this what i'm going to do today is i'm not going to um throw it out in one big lump i'm going to um do it in little areas and see which way is the best way to do it because last week when i did that job uh, on the slope i found that i didn't place them very well and what happened was i had but as soon as I'd spread one, I'd already kind of met the other pile before I'd finished spreading it. So I ended up with like two or three piles where I didn't actually need it. I could have just probably got away with one bag. So just management and trying to find a better way of doing things all the time. So let's get on with it. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is first, I'm just going to try just spreading it out by hand like this. And see how we get on. Because this is how I used to spread Jack's Magic as well, don't forget. So nothing's changed in terms of technique, I guess. And I have only got seven bags with me today, so I have not got as much as I did when I did the job last week. So we'll just do it like this, and then I'll just show you in a sec with the brush. I'll just put enough down so I can actually spread it around with the brush. This is literally just to give it a coating. You might be asking, like last year you did it with 70-30 top dressing, and that is true. We did. But that's because it was a new job, and... We just needed to raise up some of the little undulations where we'd had a little bit of sinkage towards the edge. But now we've done that, we don't need to use that anymore. Now you can't use this stuff for levelling off because it degrades. Any compost, any natural material like that, which is um, recent, you know, like uh, compost does just degrade over time. So if you was levelling your lawn with it, it wouldn't last very long because it would just degrade down to nothing so you use a 70 30 top dressing for that but here now we can just use this literally just to cover the seed and keep it nice and snug and warm a few things it does one keep it warm two holds on to water so the seeds always got something there and it just makes it nice and cozy now what we don't want to do is after we've spread the seed. If you imagine planting a sunflower seed in a pot for that to grow, you wouldn't then seal the surface off as hard as you can and walk on it because that seed wouldn't be able to push through. And that's the same with grass seed. The seed 
has to be allowed to turn because it's got two ends, the seed. It's got two points, one has a root and then the other one is kind of halfway along where the red shoot comes out of the middle. And it, when you throw it on the ground, the root might be pointing upwards. So the seed has to be able to turn so the root can start pointing downwards and the green shoot can come up. So if you go around stamping all over it after you've seeded, it's going to make it like a concrete surface and that seed just can't push through and it's not going to get the results you want. So that's why once I've done it, I just work backwards and I just leave the surface nice and fluffy. And also like if you imagine like a farmer doing potatoes, you know, they just leave it all nice and fluffy, don't they, afterwards. They don't go over it with a big roller and squash it all down because it just creates problems if they did that. So I say, same with the seed. We just leave it all nice and bonny on top. No need to stamp it in. So I'll get this done, finished off, and then I'll see you around the back. Okay, welcome round the back garden. So as you can see, it's not looking as good as the front and that's due to all these fences and not much sun. So we've got quite a bit of dieback around the edges, but the middle looks really good, but we don't always get the dieback along this corner and up there as well, just because that's right in the corner. Obviously there's just no sun gets there, but it's looking better than it did last year. So we just had a bit of a moss issue. What's happening is it's growing out the borders and the spores are landing on the lawn. So I treated them with the iron, so they're ready to be raked out. I won't be able to get that close with the scarifier, but again, I'll just get the hand scarifier like I did in the front and do that by hand. A few bits of weedy grass is knocking about, so I'll get those out before we start. A few weeds, but they'll come up with the scarifier. So it's very much the same as around the front, but with this lawn today, I'm going to be covering it. So I've got my fleece already bought, and I've made a bit of a rake. Normally I buy 1.5 metre lengths, but a bit of an oversight, I bought 2.5 metre lengths. But that's okay, because what will happen is it'll mean more coverage with less work. Um, same amount of pins, because you still need to stick some down the middle, but it'll be less cutting anyway, so that's good. Uh, it's just no good because they're quite heavy and uh, quite long to go in the van. So, just started raining again, but we must crack on because we've just got so much to do. So many gardens and we're not even really scratch the surface yet, so uh, let's uh, get started. Okay, so I just wanted to get this weed grass out. I think it's annual meadow grass, I'll know more when I get it out, but it's coming out either way, just to make sure. So we just get our fork and just gently prise it out. And if there's seed heads on there, you've got to be extra careful so you don't end up spreading the seeds everywhere. So what you don't want to do is, is flick and, and then that goes like that and then flicks seed everywhere. So you just got to do it. Make sure the fork is well under the root so you get a good hold on it. And then just tease it out in the root. You can hear the roots breaking. And that lets you know that it's coming out on its way. So that's almost out. So you can see, I'm not sure if it's, there's no uh, kink in the leaf. So that makes me think it's not annual meadow grass, but either way, Oh, there you go. That one's annual meadow grass. So you can see up close. I'll just come in. You can see a little bit of a genetic kink there, and that means it's annual meadow grass. So I'm glad we found that. If you have to take a little bit of rye grass with it as well, no problem. We can put that back. But um, in the main, we want to get all the annual meadow grass out. So I'll just do this other piece. And then we'll have a look at that one and see, see what it is. But well, yeah, this could be, uh, so there, so if you have a look at that. You can see like some dots running up there. And that's, uh, you know, it's annual meadow grass with that little ribbon in that leaf there. So glad we've got that out.
So I said I'd use a straight edge, but I've not been able to find one. And I didn't really want to get my hands and knees just because the ground's not firm enough really. So I'm using the back edge of this rake. So it's got the rake and this really good straight edge. For this job, this is great. It's too big though, I think, because I want to flip it and do that all the time. If it was just a little bit shorter, it'd be better. It's still usable, but I think it could be improved. So one day I might chop the edges off, get a new one, and chop the edges off this one and then I've got the versatility of the two but it is some screw fix that's all I'm going to say I'm not here to put links up for you I'll show you where the toilet is but I'm not going to wipe your backside for you so you've seen it you've seen the rake I've told you where it is so that's that so I'm just going to finish this off and just like I made reference to on the front when we've finished we don't want to leave this sealed because obviously when you do that, you leave it almost screeded, as so though you like you were screeding concrete. And with that, you would leave it rock hard, which is what will happen. So what I'm going to do is once I've finished this, I'm just going to go over it, flip the rake over, and just walk up and down with the rake just to break up that surface. And then I'm going to go on with the fleece. Okay, so that's the fleecing done. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, last time you used that compost, you told us to put a wetting agent on, and this time you're not. You just want to sell us some wetting agent. I really don't. It's all optional. Everything I do is non-obligatory. I just offer you the best advice. But I'm one step ahead of you. The reason I've not put any on yet is because I want to kill two birds with one stone. So we do need it for the compost. But do you remember last year when I was doing Howard Front Lawn, a lot of you, or the biggest question I have regarding the fleece is, Dan, the water just beads off when I'm watering. Eventually it soaks through, but what can we do to get it through immediately? We put wetting agent on our phone. Just putting a spray of wetting agent on just helps the water get through. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to spray it now, and then the water goes through with the wetting agent attached, and then that will then penetrate through to the compost, giving us that wetting agent we need as well for the compost. Like I say, non obligation you don't have to do it but i just advise it that's all i can do give you the best advice and then when you do you get results like mine so i'll do the back and we'll go around the front and that's job done for today rain forecast so i couldn't ask for much more really so let's get spraying not any put any preceding fertilizer on anything we don't need that we've already got rise and shine on there so there's plenty of that still around in the soil so we'll just stick that on It's going to be difficult to see where I've been, but it's leaving like little salt bubbles. So it gives us an idea where we've been. It'll do. Famous words of mine, it'll do. So yeah, just hope this temp weather's improve a little bit. It's getting a bit tiresome. Clocks go back later on. It's Saturday, was it 25th of March today? So yeah, so hopefully spring will turn up soon. But I can tell you now it will do. And then it'll just go really hot overnight. There'll be no middle ground. It'll literally be like cold, then boiling, and then we'll be washing before you know it. So that's that sprayed. I'll go and do the front, then that's job done. All right, so that's this video done and dusted. All we need to do now is let the rain water this in and we'll be absolutely perfect. Sun shining just as I'm leaving, which is a bit of a shame. Wish it would have shined while I was working. My hands are just about thawed out. So if you've liked this video, please give me a like and a subscribe. And if you want to see more lawns being turned around like this, then join me next time on Daniel Hibbert Lawn Expert. See you soon.